uh, Exar was supplying, had a 40 year contract to supply Arnold with coal that ended in December 2015. At the time of the end of the contract, the price that we were paying Arnold was 1,132. Not even Cat Blanche picked it up. 1,132. Exaro came to us and said they would like to renew this contract at 1,400. Plus, we have to put capital into their mine because it's a cost plus mine. And we said, no, the contract is coming to an end. We would rather go out on tender and tender for people that are interested in supplying us with coal. With coal. We're not interested in how they're going to mine it, and we're going to take coal from the lowest bidder. What then happened is, not Tegeta, but Glenco was in a group of seven suppliers that were then appointed to supply Arnott in the interim while we go out on a long-term tender for the supply of coal at Arnott. Not Tegeta, not the Guptas. Glenco was in the list of people that were supplying Arnott. While that arrangement was in place for Glencore and Optimum and six others, we have published the name of the six. I don't remember them by heart. We have published the name of the six. While they were supplying us, the transaction to sell Optimum between Glencore and Anno took place, and Tegeta inherited the Glencore contract to supply Anno. The accusation that we gave Tegeta a tender to supply on an interim basis to Anno. It was a transfer that happened at the time of the sale of Optima between Glencore and Tegeta. We've tried to explain this so many times. I think people are simply not interested in the truth. So they supplied in December, January, February, March, April. In April, we were entering winter. The five suppliers said they would like to go back to their normal day jobs because winter is coming and there's going to be more demand for their coal at the places where they normally supply. Umsimbit said they are okay. They will continue supplying Arnold. Tegeta said, we can help you at Arnold with coal, but there is a portion of the mine that Glencore was not mining, which was export coal quality. Glencore had been saving that export coal quality coal to export it when the price improved, not to give to ESCO to export it. But Tegeta said, we will mine it, but we have a problem. We don't have the capital to restart those operations. We don't have the capital to restart those operations because our bank accounts have been closed, nobody wants to give us credit, and we've just paid optimum for the, we've just paid Glencore for the optimum mine. Would you consider advancing to us the money to reopen the export side, and we will give you that call. And we agreed, because we have no reason not to do business with Teget. Nobody has told me why we can't do business with Teget. We took the shares of Teget as security, and said, if you don't pay us back this money, you lose this company. And they agreed, they gave us the shares. They took the money, they restarted the operation, They've been supplying to us at the higher price because that is export quality coal. But that higher price is 500 and 470 at 470. 
they've been supplying to us at 470, which is more than half of what we had been paying Exaro. Cut Blanche didn't pick that up. More than half of what we had been paying Exaro at 1,132 per ton. We have not been paying them for the coal because we have been deducting the coal that we received from Tegeta from the prepayment for May, June, and now July, while we are adjudicating the tender for the supply of Arnold on a permanent basis, right? That amount of prepayment is almost finished being paid. It will be done by the end of December, I, or by September. I do not see, it's September, but they could accelerate it and do it quicker. I do not see anything wrong in that transaction. It has been done before. It is normal business practice. It has been done in business, outside of ESCOM, everywhere it is being done, especially under the circumstances where we did not have the reasons why the banks closed their bank accounts when the bank accounts of the construction industry are still open. The bank accounts of Medras and fraudsters, the bank account of Mr. What's his name? From ESCOM. Malherbe. Malherbe. I believe, I think he still has a bank account, despite being convicted for fraud at ESCOM. Now, uh, until we get those reasons, really, we do not see any reasons why Tegeta should be discriminated against. It is against the spirit of our law to do that. And it is a dangerous thing to do things without reasons. The Constitution says the public must be protected from arbitrary administrative decisions. Somebody has to show us why. Refusing. Because I think people would rather we even switch off their electricity for their house and for their businesses. I think if we tomorrow morning said we've switched off power supply to all Gupta businesses, the high priests of the uh, of this uh, um, uh, kangaroo court would be elated if we did that, but we can't. It's unconstitutional, it is illegal in South Africa. It's against our, our, the basis of who we are, a country that prides itself for its human rights record, a country that does not act arbitrarily against individuals, irrespective of who they are and where they come from. That is how I understood our democracy. And if I'm wrong, please correct me. So, so that is the Tegeta involvement at the, at the Arnold, and we do not see anything wrong with it. It's a very small portion of our total supply of coal it's a very small portion of our activities. And if you think that there are instances where we are paying 1,600 rand per ton, and nobody is complaining about it, nobody is saying anything about it, uh, I do not understand what the halabaloo is about. Safe to think myself that it is a very dangerous culture. I have worked in Limpopo, where people were burned alive by comrades because they said they were witches. I have attended the kangaroo court. I've seen people. I've seen the face of an old woman who was accused of being a witch, who was about to be burned. And we were trying to stop people from doing so. The entire crowd erupts. And they say, ben her, ben her, ben her. And she's helpless. And they've got a tire and petrol. But it's a very dangerous culture. It is, and it does not make it right, because it is being done by people with power who own the banks. It does not make it right that it is being done by the intelligentsia and the media of our country. It does not make it right. I'm interested in the reasons. Why do we have that attitude? Has there been any finding by any? What has happened? 
Is it because they landed in Waterloo? What about the guys that stole billions in the construction industry? What warrants such vitriol from South Africa? I don't understand. I really don't understand it. And I plead for somebody to explain that to me in an op-ed on Sunday.